what you're seeing now is, is black germs particularly being much more vocal about this fact that no one is objective and our role as journalists is not necessarily to be objective, but it's to be fair. Uh, I often get asked um, the question about, from younger journalists, younger black journalists, let me be very specific about this, about, you know, finding their voice, uh, trying to get into the type of work that I do now, the type of work that you do and have done it far longer and much better than, than I have, um, especially coming from the, the sports side of things. For younger black journalists who are listening to this or, or even get a chance to watch it, who want to know how they can get into um, covering the type of work that you do. I mean, you're specifically focused on civil rights and racial injustice. I know that there's not a lot of papers or publications creating those kind of beats. So what advice would you have for them if they want to eventually do the kind of work that you do? Yeah, that's a that's a, a great and important question because I think it's really critical for younger journalists and upcoming journalists that we demystify all of this. Um, I'm like, you know, my most of my career was like Master P trying to sell CDs out of the back of the trunk, and and I think folks need to realize like it, I'm 44 years old. It took a long time for me to get to this uh, place in my career. I started out a very traditional career. We started out in the same place, the uh, Raleigh News and Observer. I was a beat reporter. I covered education. I covered county government. I mean, I, I covered whatever I had to cover to get the reporting skills and chops and um, then built my way up to, to being able to do the type of coverage that I do now and to have the type of freedom that I have now. But it's not like I started out and anybody was going to be like, write 10,000 words for this cover story. Um, when I first started out, I couldn't get on the front page of the newspaper, no matter what I was writing. So I think it's really important that young journalists like do the work. Um, you don't have to start in New York City. You know, most of us started at smaller newspapers that actually allowed us to do some real reporting and develop some real skills. And we built up those skills and then worked our way up to a bigger establishment. And I don't believe in a hierarchy. Like if you have the talent to start at the New York Times, to start at the New York Times. Um, but I think had I started at the New York Times at a young age, I wouldn't be um, doing the work that I'm doing at the New York Times right now because I just wouldn't have had the experience. Another thing I'd say is, uh, you know, read really good journalism, study it. This is a craft. If, if there's a type of work that you want to do, study the people who do that type of work and how they do it. Um, and the last advice I'll give, which was not a problem uh, when I was coming up because we barely had the internet, but don't worry about your brand. Like I hear, I get this all the time. I hate, like, I hate that word. Oh right? my How God. do I build my brand? You don't have a brand. <laughs> like what, the, the, the brand is the work. Like if you do the work, then whatever you think the brand is, the recognition will come, but you have to have a foundation of good work. Um, for most of my career, I, I wasn't allowed to be a race beat reporter. There, there was, most newspapers didn't have a race beat reporter. They weren't interested in that. I had to fight really hard to write about our folks, but I made myself eventually undeniable. And that's the same thing that you did, Jamel, right? Like you, you through the work, through doing the grunt work, through uh, being excellent, um, through not giving up, you make yourself undeniable. And that's what has allowed me now to do whatever work I want to. But 10 years ago, that wasn't the case. And um, I also try to tell them too, that I was, doing the work before it had an official title, right? Because exactly. I imagine when you co you covered education, I'm going to just guess, especially given the, your commentary now about uh, segregation and, and what's happening with education, that you started writing those type of stories then. Absolutely. You know, your, beat, your beat wasn't race and education. Your beat was just education, but you could see it through the lens of being, um, of being a Black community that had suffered greatly because of segregation, and you could write those stories. So even though officially at the Atlantic, my job is to cover um, the convergence of race, gender, and sports and culture. I've been writing those stories for years. That's it right. Just have an, it just didn't have an, an official, you know, kind of kind of title to it. So you don't That's need right. somebody to hire you to specifically do that work to start engaging and doing that work on on whatever. Um, you know, beat that 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 you you happen to be doing. Um, and That's the by thing the way, about race, it's, right? It's it's on every yeah. beat, and and every exactly. every job they hired me on, I was writing about race. So I'm like, oh, you think I'm a county government reporter? But but look, I'm about to write about race. And uh, I wasn't a I wasn't a race writer 
until seven years ago. Most of my career, I never had that title. But if you looked at what I was producing, I was a race writer. So, you know, a big part of, of being a journalist is you you give them what they want so you can do what you want. And you have to find a way to, to do both of those things until you get to, you know, where we are. And then you just mostly get to do what you want. And you're one of the few people that I talked to that we had very similar, you know, paths. I'm also 44. And um, you, I, I hate telling the, the young kids now what my journalism path was because <laughs> it doesn't really apply to them anymore, right? I came up through traditional newspapers. Yep. I don't know if I could, in good faith, encourage them to work for newspapers now because it's such a volatile industry unless you get an opportunity to work at a New York Times or someplace that's like really stable. So it kind of, it doesn't even match up with, with technology and social media being what it is now. Uh, along those same lines, um, you and uh, well, also Wesley Lowry, who recently wrote about this, about there being this idea or this constant narrative that was pushed in our business and journalism that Black journalists can't be objective when it comes to writing about race yeah. or really, yeah, anything dealing with race. And that all the white people, because, you know, I guess because they weren't impacted as much by race, which to me is a disqualifying factor, not really one that makes you uh, somebody who should be at the front lines of, of writing about racial issues. But he attacked this very idea that black journalists can't be objective. And you said something that I had never really considered before when you were talking about white reporters covering education and how many of them, because, uh, you know, as you pointed out, and it's true, a lot of the education writers are white women, and they never reported about segregation in education, and this was considered a good thing when, to me, it was a, a major blind spot. Um, what I'd like to, to hear from you is your thoughts on this idea and whether or not you feel like it's a crumbling idea that we, as a journalist, must be objective at all times. I mean, first of all, it's not true, but like, what yeah. are your thoughts about uh, this this constant battle or um, you know conversation we're having about objectivity when we know it, it's kind of a, a false conversation? Yeah, so I've never subscribed to the notion that any human being can be objective about anything that they have any base of knowledge about. Um, if you're objective about something, you probably have uh, don't know that much about it, and as soon as you learn enough about it, you have an opinion about it. What we've really been dealing with is. Um, is news organizations wanting to, uh, wanted reporters to have a veneer of objectivity, to pretend that we are objective and we don't have feelings and thoughts about things or that our lived experience doesn't matter. Um, but black journalists have just never had that luxury. So I don't think white journalists are objective about anything. And I certainly don't think white uh, uh, journalists are objective about covering race. When you are in a white majority in a country founded on white supremacy, um, where the systems function largely to your favor, that's not an objective viewpoint in covering those systems. That's why white journalists weren't writing about segregation. It was segregation benefited them, it benefited their children, and it wasn't something um, that they thought was important, but that's not objective. Uh, and black journalists, we have always been writing in a country that didn't think we were citizens, in a country that didn't think we deserved full rights. So how does one objectively write about lynching? How does one objectively write about Jim Crow? Uh, how does one objectively write about segregation um, as a Black journalist when clearly all of these have uh, impact? So I, I think that this idea of objectivity, we know even in American journalism is fairly new. Um, when journalism first started in this country, even white journalists weren't pretending to be objective. The New York Times was founded as a Republican paper. Um, there were Democrat papers and Republican papers. And uh, white journalists have really used this notion of objectivity, I think, to, um, to put forth a white normative view and to obscure criticism because, well, hey, we're just, we're just being objective and presenting the facts. Was it objective when journalists uh, published the police report of the police who killed Eric Garner when the police said uh, that nothing happened and they didn't know how he died? Was that objective? I would argue that it wasn't. And what you're seeing now is, is Black journalists particularly being much more vocal about this fact that no one is objective. And our role as journalists is not necessarily to be objective, but it's to be fair. Are we fairly presenting the facts? Are we fairly airing the different viewpoints? Are our facts accurate? Um, should we be objectively covering a white nationalist in the White House? Or should we objectively say, or should we subjectively say, we actually care about democracy, we care about the rule of law, we care about citizens' rights, and we're gonna cover him that way. Um, 
So I think it's, it is past time that we stop pretending that there's ever been uh, objectivity. Everything in news uh, is subjective. What beats we cover? Why do we have a, a police beat but not a poverty beat? Um, that's a subjective decision. What do we put on the front page? That's a subjective decision. Who you interview, all of these are subjective decisions, but we've pretended they're objective and that's a way to really obscure uh, criticism. Um, so I'm glad to see more journalists feeling liberated to speak out about that. Um, and I guess I should say there is a difference between uh, pretending to be objective and telling everybody what you think about the people you cover on your beat. I don't think, I, I don't want to know who uh, Maggie Haberman votes for or what she personally feels about Donald Trump. I, I don't think that's useful, but I'm also not going to pretend that she has no thoughts or feelings about Donald Trump and, and what she's covering.